With the techniques I will show you in this tutorial, your motion graphic titles will stand out in a world of boring text animations, so get ready to unlock character animation, duplicate text effects and even special noise notes to create your next level video with motion graphics. Let's jump right in. So to create our text we have to use a fusion composition. So let's get one and go to the fusion page and in here we will just take this text node and connect it to the media out. Let's change the view mode to single view mode so we have our bigger screen. Now let's type out some text, maybe characters and I will change the font on this one. Under normal circumstances you animate your text by using these attributes in the inspector but this only animates the whole text and if you want to animate single characters you have to right click in this text box and then click on follower. Now you can see there is some animation keyframe happening. To access this you have to go to the modifiers and now there are five different tabs you can modify. The first tab is the timing tab so if you animate something we can set a delay I will set it to 2. You will see what happens if we animate the next thing. Then here is your text tab, you have a transform tab, a shading tab and a settings tab. So let's start out by using the transform tab and setting an animation keyframe to the rotation of our characters. I will set this keyframe at the first frame and then let's go to the fifth frame Set another keyframe and set it to zero. And now if you play it back, you can already see the delay effect we set in the timing tab because the characters turn around one by one. Another thing I would like to do is go to the shading tab and animate the opacity to be zero at the start and then one at the end. And now if you play it back, it looks like this. We can use this effect and change many other things, for example the X rotation and the Z rotation to have a rotation in this direction or that direction, but I will change this back to zero because now I want to introduce a duplicate node. This node takes our thing we plug in it and duplicates it with a set of copies. So let's connect it and on the top we can change the amount of copies and what's even more interesting is we can change the center. So if we drag this to the top and then maybe choose four copies or let's do six copies so it fills our screen. You can see it's evenly spaced out. And down here on the blend attribute you can reduce it so it blends out with the copies. What I'm doing next is Control C on the duplicate node and Control Shift V to paste an instance of this duplicate node. An instance is like a copy of exact the same node and the values are linked. You can see here are green boxes around our attributes. So if I change the size on one of those duplicate nodes, it changes it on the other one too. So let's take this duplicate node and right click on the center attribute and then press the instance. Now these two nodes aren't linked anymore. So I can change the center offset to change the position of our characters. But before we can see this I have to merge this duplicate node to our node graph and connect our text to the instance. Now the text of the second duplicate node appeared and, and let's fine tune the distance. And now I want to change the animation between the duplicates too. So let's click on one of these duplicate nodes. Remember, it doesn't matter which one because we have linked the values. And let's change the time offset 
maybe to one. If you look at the second duplicate node, you can see the time offset has changed too. And this time there's a small delay between the animations in the middle and at the end. So let's take this text and animate it a little bit more. There's this tracking option in Inspector, which places the characters with more space or with less space to each other. So let's go to frame 20, where our first animation is finished, and place a keyframe on the tracking option. Then let's go to frame 40 and increase it. Now you can see the delay between the animations even more. I want this tracking animation to loop, so I will go to the spline. Let's select this character spacing and press this button to show all keyframes. And I will select them both and press S on my keyboard to smooth out the curve. And then I press T and I will increase both these values to 50. And then I will click on this set ping pong icon. This will loop our animation. And it looks pretty smooth, right? So there's one thing I want to change because in the middle our text is clearly white but then the opacity changes and we can still see the text on the top. I want this opacity to drop further on the edges but uh, quicker. Let's go to the duplicate node and remove this blend option so everything is white. And now we just take a merge node and we hook a background node to it. But we drag the alpha all the way down. And you can see the yellow line is the background. So our text is the background and not the background node. And to change this, I will select the merge node and then press Ctrl T on my keyboard. And now this has changed. I will take a rectangle node and connect it as a mask for this merge node. And here we can change the width all the way up. And we can change the height to about 0.8. And now let's enable this soft edge to have the text on the edges fade out. So let's play it back and see the result. It looks quite nice. And there's another thing I can animate and it's the beginning of the clip. For example, I can take this rectangle we used to make this fall off and set a keyframe on maybe frame 18, the height on the width, and then set a keyframe on frame zero and I think I will just change the height and not the width. So let's let's delete this keyframe on the width. Now we have this iris opening up our animation. And let's go to the spline and smooth this out. Press S and change the ease in. And if this is too boring for you, you can set a keyframe on the angle too. And then go to the first frame. And maybe change the angle to 50 degrees and now the iris opens up this way. The next thing I want to show you is this echo effect everybody knows from After Effects but we can do this in DaVinci too. So let's disconnect this merge node and create a new text node and let's type in echo. Then we change the font to Mozara Black. Now we have to go to the layout, no, to the shading, and click on the appearance on the second version. And as you can see, there are these ugly intersections, and you can delete them by clicking Clean Intersections. I will decrease the line thickness quite a bit. And what I'm going to do too is adding a soft glow. 
what we can do is use our duplicate node from before and place it behind the text node and let's create five copies and change the size of them. Let's place them like this and now it looks quite ugly but you can just decrease this blend here to make it look better. And I think we should reduce the glow on this node too. Yeah, now you can animate this. So click on the text. Let's animate the size of it, just like a regular text. Let's go to frame zero, place the keyframe. And on frame 20, we will increase it. With the text node selected, go to the spline. And let's move it out, just like before. and select this. Let's create a ping pong animation. But we can improve one thing and that's on the duplicate node. We can change the time offset. So let's make it 2.5. Oh, that's trippy. Let's reduce it to 1.5. Yeah, that's better, but I would decrease it even further, maybe to 0.75. Uh, I think it goes into the wrong direction, so maybe let's set it to minus 0.75. Yeah, now it's correct. The next text effect I want to show you is a flickering text, but we don't want the whole text to flicker. We only want single characters to flicker. Create a new text node, connect it to the media out, and change the text to flicker. And I will go with the same font again. To make single characters flicker, we can use our follower effect again. So click on this, then go to modifiers and for the order on the timing, choose completely random. Then delay, move it a little bit up. And on the shading tab, you can now make keyframes. So let's start with opacity of one and go maybe two frames and make the opacity zero. Then go another frame, change the opacity. Go another frame, change the opacity. Go another frame, change the opacity. Now I've done three patterns and I can go to this spline and select all keyframes and use the loop function. If it flickers too fast, you can go to the timing tab and increase the timing. And in the spline, you can just move the keyframes further away from each other. So the flicker is reduced. Let's watch the result. Yeah, I, I like it. Now we want to create a text scene with the moon. And I already prepared the text. It's just a text note and the word Luna. To add the moon, we will have to get an ellipse and a background node and connect them and then merge them to our media out. And let's change the background color to white. And I will connect the height and the width value. So it's always a circle. So let's click on expression and drag the plus icon on the width. And now we can drag it down to change the size. Then I will take another ellipse and drag it into another background node. This one will be black and let's merge it here. And click on the ellipse too and I will make it wider and drag it to the top and change the angle 
bar double decrease the size. Then we will take the output of the first ellipse and drag it onto the mask input of our merge node. So everything which goes over our circle will be cut off. And then we can go to the ellipse 2 and increase the soft edge. Now you can see it also has some white shimmer on top. So we can just move the ellipse a little bit more on top and maybe increase the height. To get our grainy effect, you will press shift space and search for film grain and connect it here. you can see it already appears here but first of all I increase the strength and the roughness and maybe add a little bit of more of com add a little bit complexity and now I will take the second ellipse output and drag it as a mask to add the glow we will move the media out a little bit to the back and add a soft glow node And then we will add a drop shadow too. And I only want the glow to be behind our letters. So let's take this merge node and drag it to the end of our drop shadow node. And this will put all the letters and the moon in front of the glow and the drop shadow node. And now I will change the glow strength. Let's reduce the gain a little bit. Uh, we can increase the glow size. The last step is to animate our moon. And before we do that, when you hit play, you can see this noise is moving. So let's click on the film grain node again and check this time lock icon. And to animate the moon, we will go to the first frame and click on our second ellipse and keyframe the center attribute. And then we go to the last frame and let's move it. We don't have to smooth this out because it's just a linear motion. And now that you have learned so many things about text, I'm pretty sure you are interested in how to use it and place it in eye-catching compositions. So go watch this next video and I will see you there.